Hi, gorgeous. This is Shannon Thompson, professional makeup artist. Hopefully your favorite makeup artist or one of them. All right, today I'm coming to you from the pretty department. And before we get into money, because we're going to talk about money today again, because everybody wants to get paid. Let's also talk about my book, Shameless Plug. Makeup is just colored dirt. If you haven't gotten it, you should get it. If you have it, thank you in advance. I hope that you're learning so many things. Where did you get it from if you already got it? You got it from wherever books are sold or from amazon.com. Makeup is just colored dirt, clever name, amazing. And you should follow my Instagram page, Makeup Thompson. That's T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. It kind of like singy songy a little bit because I'm there and I talk about all kinds of great stuff as well. And you get to see me at work sometimes or glimmers of it, all right? And since you're on YouTube, just click the subscribe button, it's right there, and subscribe to my makeup channel. The professional series is amazing, my makeup tutorials are amazing, I'm amazing, you're amazing, everything is amazing. So go ahead and be amazing and subscribe. So let's talk about money, okay? And let's talk about bridal and special event. If you've ever watched any of my makeup videos before, you'll learn that I say special event makeup. That includes like proms, and birthdays and all those type of things. And the reason why I lump that into bridal and I call it special event, because it's a special event in somebody's life. Everybody's birthday is a special event. A prom or any of those things is a special event. Even going out on a night with your friends or you know a bachelorette party is a special event. So I call it special event makeup. And because of that, I lump the money together, okay? So I say it interchangeably. So let's break down money for bridal. You'll probably hear a lot of different things about bridal and majority of the time, 99.90% .90 of them are correct, okay? So this is you as the freelance makeup artist to figure out what works best for you. So let's dive into it, bridal. When you first start as a makeup artist, that's normally where you're gonna start in the bridal world. Do not feel bad if you wanna, again, win an Academy Award like I would like to one day. Not what I like to, I'm going to one day, all right, when you're standing up there and you're saying, well, I wanna do this, but right now I'm in bridal. Don't feel bad, it's a lucrative industry. People make a lot of money in it and some people never move from it. So don't feel bad about it, even if your dreams are of champagne and right now you're drinking sparkling water, okay? But you wanna pay for that sparkling water. So the way that bridal works, a lot of times you'll hear two different prices. So you'll say there's a price for the bride and then a price for the bridal party. So for example, the bride might be $125 and the bridal party might be $85 a face. That is the standard thing that normally happens in the bridal industry. And the reason why they normally do that is because they're like, hey, the bride is gonna look beautiful this day and she's paying for all these particular things, but the bridal party isn't getting married and they have to pay for the dress and the shoes and this. So why don't we give them a little bit of a break so again professionally if you charge two different prices then that's okay as well but I don't charge two different prices I charge one price okay and this is why my mentor told me a really long time ago when I first started in the makeup industry when I was a brisk 17 years old all right I heard even getting paid by the time I was 17 for a whole year I know I really knew what I wanted to be when I grew up super early on but my makeup artist told me when I was 17, hey Shannon, do you do the same makeup for the bride that you do for the bridesmaids? And I said, um, no. So he asked me one more time, do you just do the same makeup that you do for the brides that you do for the bridesmaids or the bridal party? And again, I said, no. He said, well, do you use the same brushes? Are you using your same makeup kit? And I said, yes, yes. I was like, I clean my brushes, but yes. Um, he was like, then why are you charging two different prices? He's like, does the makeup last all day long for the bride and for the bridal party? I said, yes. Are the pictures impeccable with those makeup on? And I said, yes. He said, well, why are you charging two different prices? They're getting the same makeup, the same makeup application. It's lasting all day long on everybody and it looks impeccable in all the pictures. So you, why are you charging two different prices? Use your charge per face. I was like, hmm. So going forward, I start, started to say my price is X amount of dollars. At that point, it was $80. $80 when I was 17. It's $80 a face. And somebody will say, well, what does that mean? If my brush touches your face, then that's how much it costs. All right. Now we're going to include like a, you know, a flower girl or maybe grandma that's 90 years old. And you're just going to put a little blush on her and a little lip gloss. We're not going to charge any money for those people. Those are just courtesy things, but people that you're doing full makeup for and that you have a contract for, or you agree to is if your brush touches your face and they're getting a makeup application, I charge per face. However, if you charge individually, like I said, a bride or the bridal party separately, then that's totally okay too. All right. But if you charge per 
face. Your break just went up immediately. So for example, let's say, let's make the numbers really easy. Let's say that you charge $100 for the bride and you charge $50 for the bridal party, all right? And there are four people in the bridal party. So now you just made $300, right? Because five people got their makeup done. There were four people for $50 a face and the bride was $100. So that's $300 that you made, right? But you were there the same amount of time and so forth and so on. But if you charge $100 a face for each individual person, you just added $200 to your rate, okay? Because each person, all four makeup, for bridesmaids or bridal party people are $100, $100, $100, $100, $100 plus that bride is $100. Now, I also include lashes in the price, okay? So therefore, that's not an upcharge. And the reason why is because especially for bridal and special event stuff, majority of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they want lashes or they're interested in lashes, right, okay? So this is the time that if it's included in your price, you can say, hey, your lashes are included. Rather, you want them or you don't want them, it's up to you. You know, if you want to be nice and hand them the lashes, if they don't want to use them, that's totally okay. Um, if not, then if they decide not to use them, then keep them in your kit. But it, it breaks down the sometimes where the peer pressure of, girl, you should get lashes. It's going to be amazing. I don't know. I can't afford lashes. If it's in the price already, it's already set, you don't have to worry about it. Also, lashes are relatively inexpensive right now. You can get a lot of them or a bulk of them inexpensively. So there's not a, a huge price that you're adding to your makeup um, kit or to your makeup price, in my opinion. But if you're using these amazingly, you know, super expensive lashes, then you may want to upcharge that. Now, I did bring up that conversation once to a fellow makeup artist and a colleague of mine that I, that I respect. And I said, hey, do you charge two different prices? And for the first time in my life, that particular makeup artist said to me, yes, I do charge two different prices because yes, I do do two completely different makeups for the bridal party than I do for the bride. And I said, well, please explain. And that makeup artist said to me, I use a specific type of makeup on them. I use higher brands. So for example, I'm using Chanel and Giorgio Armani and blah, 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 higher name brands of makeup. I'm using my own separate brushes that are just for the bride that aren't for anybody else. I'm talking to the bride beforehand. I'm doing a special skincare thing on her that I'm not using on the bridesmaids. So therefore I charge a different price for her because she's getting a different experience than the rest of the bridal party. Although the rest of the bridal party is getting a makeup experience that I'm still using, you know, brand makeup quality brand makeup, but they not might be the higher brand makeup. So therefore I charge different. And I said, well, okay. I, that, that makes 100% sense to me. And if that's what's been working for you, it's great. It, after all these years, because I'm always learning something, I was like, all right. So if you're one of these people that say, I want the bridal experience to be completely different than the bridesmaids experience, because this is that person's particular day, and I want them to have these particular items that may be a little bit different than the other person's items, and that justifies my price of being a little bit different, then I say, go ahead and do that. Rule of thumb, though is that if you charge one price for the bride, you know, you charge one price for the bridal party, then you stick to that. Because a lot of times what happens is if they're, you're saying I'm charged per face, a lot of times they're like, I didn't, I, you know, that's outside of my budget. I didn't think that I'd be able to do that. But explain, you're bringing all of your skill to them, them you're bringing all of your makeup to them, you're gonna be with them for however, however long you want them to be there for, and you um, are gonna make sure that the makeup lasts all day long, and you get that. Now, when we go into special event makeup, meaning those proms and those other events that are in life, I charge, if you're gonna, I charge what you would call the bride price, right? So for a prom, if I'm $150 a face, then that's what I'm gonna charge for that prom girl as well. The lashes are gonna be included, that makeup is gonna last all day long, she's gonna look great, her pictures and her Instagram story and her Snapchat and all the things that he or she is doing for the particular prom that they're getting their makeup done or they or whoever you identify as, everybody can wear makeup and it looks amazing, you know, and if you're, somebody's going out for their birthday or whatever event, I'm trying to charge that quote unquote bridal price or per face price, all right? So again, if you're $150, that's what it would be. So if you're just starting off in the bridal world, I would say start at 100 to $150 a face if you're doing per face. If you're char doing two separate prices, prices, I would say charge $100 for the bridal party and $150 for the bride. All right, now, if you've been doing bridal for a very long time, okay, you have won best of bridal, you have gotten it down packed, your, pride, your price can go up a little bit. That's when I would say if you're at $150 a face, go up to between $200 and $250 a face and let that be your cap. 
unless you want it to be a little bit higher, then totally okay for that. And if you're doing two separate prices, then I would say go up between $200 and $250 for the bride and go up to $150 to $200 for the bridal party. All right, and again, that's you doing it for a long time, being an expert in the bridal industry, having maybe won awards or being the best of something in those particular things, and you're the go-to person for those things as well. And again, if you wanna have two completely different experiences, then that's up to you. Now, here's where the other stuff comes in and getting paid. That's just the price for them to do your makeup. If you're doing weddings, okay, sometimes people want you to be there all day long. Well, you don't know them. They ain't your friends, okay? You are there for work. So what I like to do is say, that's my price for me to do your makeup. Once my winter makeup is done, it's going to last all day long. It's going to look amazing. And you can give them tips and tricks for it to last. For example, say, hey, you buy a blot powder or get some blot paper. And if anything shows up, you can block them down and show them how to do that themselves. Suggest that they buy whatever lip stuff that they have on because they're going to talk and kiss and communicate and all those particular things. And lipsticks has a tendency to, you know, over the day go away. Even if it's a super matte and it says it lasts all day long, it does wear down a little bit a lot of times. All right. And make sure that they have that as well and explain that to the bridal party but sometimes people are like well can you be there for you know the touch-ups after the uh ceremony before we go into pictures then you're going to charge a different rate okay or you should charge a different rate because again you have to wait around for that particular thing and a lot of times you're called in early the wedding is until two o'clock but you were there at 11 o'clock and the wedding isn't going to be over until three o'clock and then they're going to not going to do these pictures to around three 15 ish 320 ish you know so you have to be there that whole time so you have to be paid you should be paid for that time so let's say that you're doing that bridal party of those five people we talked about and now you're a hundred dollars a face so you made your five hundred dollars all right so if the bride says you know can you just stick around for that particular thing i would say yes but you're going to charge between a hundred and two hundred dollars for that time period all right okay so if you're done doing makeup by 12 o'clock and she wants you to stay around till about four o'clock you would charge two hundred dollars that's about fifty dollars an hour all right while you're waiting for that 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 time period you know and if they want you to follow them for touch-ups for the pictures as well again i would say charge another hundred dollars for that particular thing if that person is late then you want to charge a late fee i promise you in bridal and especially in prom people just do not get time right all right and as much as they want to be on point they do but you're sitting around waiting so if you're there and you're prepared you should have in your contract hey if you are 15 to 15 minutes late getting into my chair, I'm going to charge you $25 every 15 minutes that you have to pay in cash that day because you could be going around going to another makeup uh, wedding. You could be booked for something else. So you could just go home because you just don't want to be there. All right. Okay. You're there to work, not necessarily there to be a part of their bridal day if that makes sense. All right. Or their prom day or their special event day. So let them know that I have all jokes aside, made an, an additional $300 waiting for people because they just were late getting to places and late getting to those things. But have that in your contract and make sure that you talk about that in your contract as well. You can also sometimes, some, what some people include or some other makeup artists include is a, a bridal kind of kit, meaning that they put like a blot paper and a puff and sometimes like a blot, uh, a, a a makeup powder and a lip liner and a lipstick and they put that together in a little kit and they upcharge that and say hey here's your touch-up kit this is an additional $25 if you want to get that I can add that to it or you can give them this touch-up kit and include that in their price and they don't know it so what I mean by that you're charging $150 for them to do their makeup and they get a touch-up kit but they're actually paying for that touch-up kit that $25 that you pay because you got a discounted price for it is a part of it so you pay for that so you're getting $125 technically instead of $100 $150 or maybe like $140 depending on where you shop around and what you do but it also makes them feel special oh my god I'm getting paying $150 and I get a touch-up kit that makeup artist is amazing I'm gonna use them all the time and it's also an upsell for their other bridal party people where they're like Her, it's, she's $150 but you get a touch-up kit it's gonna last all day long and so forth and so on so you want to negotiate other things you also want to have a day rate so let's say that somebody wants you to be there majority of the day they want you to be there to get ready they want you to be there for the pictures they want you to be there after the ceremony they want you to be there for all the touch-ups for a good 
five to eight hours of your day is going to be there. So you would charge whatever you're going to charge per person, and then you're going to charge your day rate. So if you're going back to that $500, those four bridesmaids and that one bride, $500, that was $500 you paid, I would say charge another $500 to $1,000 for your entire day. Why? Because you could do two more weddings in that day or one more wedding in that day and make that same amount of money that now you have to allot your whole day for those things, all right? If you do decide that you're going to do a whole day rate, also look professional. I'm not telling you that you're not going to look professional, but a lot of times when you're coming in and you're doing the makeup, you dress semi-casual, okay? But if you know that you're going to be around and be a part of the bridal experience, kind of touching people up, you know, dress a little bit nicer, wear all black or whatever you feel comfortable in, make sure that your makeup and your hair is presentable. I'm not saying it has to be done because they probably might capture you in a picture or you might get captured in something else. And you also don't want to look like the person at the wedding that's like, who's the girl that looks like she just came from, you know, work working all day even though you have been working all day they don't want you don't want to stand out in the crowd in that particular way all right so getting paid when you're in the bridal and your special event world again it's a lot more of negotiating you're doing as you work more and as you create your own status more you want to you know make sure that you have a rate that makes sense and there needs to be a top rate a rate where you stop at that's in the bridal industry Okay. All right. Or special event industry. So I hope that you learned something. Please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, please follow me on the social media, Instagram and see me, you know, and see some of the fun stuff that I'm doing. Cause I normally show up on there and have a wonderful day.